who's my bride? That's me. My name is Heather Dunn. I am 24. I am from Fort Benning, Georgia. At this point, they either pick one of these dresses or they walk straight out of here into couples counseling. Yeah, that's a no-go. That's exactly what I don't want. I don't want them looking around like nuns. Who is my bride? Me over here. My, I'm just not crazy about the peach dress. This is not her wedding. This is my wedding. I love the beige dress. Oh, it's a spring wedding. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I was just saying, thank you. <laughs> She likes to shoot beer cans off the fence and... Yes, tomorrow's dress. Well, then get Bride and groom breaks up in Say Yes to the Dress. Number three, Bride Heather. The atmosphere in the bridal salon was tense as Heather Dunn and her combat medic fiancé Jason Martinez stepped into the world of tall, lace, and dreams. Heather had envisioned her bridesmaids in long, flowy blue dresses that exudes elegance without being overly sexy. Excitement mingled with apprehension as they embarked on the journey to find the perfect dresses for the bridal party. As Heather eagerly flipped through dress options, Jason couldn't help but voice his opinion. Being a combat medic, he had a practical approach to things, and he believed that he should have a say in the bridesmaid's attire. The clash of visions quickly escalated into a heated argument, leaving the bridal salon staff exchanging awkward glances. Who's my bride? That's me. My name is Heather Dunn. I am 24. I am from Fort Benning, Georgia. Kim, my mother. Alex, my soon-to-be brother-in-law, and Jason, my fiance. I had literally laid eyes on him, and I knew that he was the one. We're leaning towards royal blue, long and flowy, something that's not going to make them look too sexy. Exactly. I don't want them covered from neck all the way down to their toes. It's my wedding, too, so I'm not going to sit there and sign off on everything blindly. And the bride who already has a vision for her bridesmaids is going to come second in command. Heck no. Heather, I'm going to steal you for just a second, okay. and we're going to go have a little private powwow, okay? okay? Jason has a very strong personality. If he thinks something, that's just how it is. Lori, the seasoned shop owner and consultant, sensed the tension mounting and decided to intervene. With a calming demeanor, she gently steered the conversation towards compromise. She suggested finding a dress that not only aligned with Heather's vision, but also had elements that Jason could appreciate. The couple, however, seemed unwilling to meet in the middle, and Lori realized she needed to take a more assertive approach. Lori, with her years of experience, diplomatically addressed the couple, emphasizing the importance of collaboration in wedding planning. She reminded them that the bridesmaid's dresses were a reflection of the bride's vision for her special day. However, she also acknowledged Jason's role and asked for his input on certain aspects, such as color or fabric choice. Slowly, she managed to bridge the gap between the couple's conflicting opinions. As the discussion continued, it became evident that the real issue wasn't just about the dresses. It was about the dynamics of decision-making within the relationship. Lori, adept at handling such situations, subtly guided them towards a more constructive dialogue. She emphasized the importance of compromise and reminded them that they were building a life together as a family. After some introspection, Jason had an epiphany. He realized that in the grand scheme of things, the choice of bridesmaids' dresses was a minor detail compared to the commitment they were making to each other. Taking a deep breath, he conceded, recognizing that unity and understanding were more important than winning this particular battle. With a newfound sense of harmony, the couple, with Lori's guidance, agreed on a stunning red dress that struck the perfect balance between Heather's vision and Jason's preferences. The tension in the salon dissolved as they embraced the idea that compromise was a fundamental aspect of building a life together. If this bride and groom can't find a way to compromise today, something is going to break. And I hope it's not their relationship. We'll get the ugliest tuxedos I can find for my groomsmen. This may be the worst fight I've ever seen between a couple in my salon. We're going to bring out both of their favorite one-shoulder dresses, but put them on different bridesmaids this time. At this point, they either pick one of these dresses or they walk straight out of here into couples counseling. Yeah. Usually, the bridesmaid's dress is the bride and the bridesmaid's shoes. At the end of the day, it's your choice, your bridesmaids, and go right ahead and make your choice. You're saying what to this dress? I'm saying yes to that dress. Woo! Number two, 
Bride Amy. In the bustling world of bridal appointments, emotions ran high as Amy, the youngest of five sisters, embarked on her journey to find the perfect bridesmaid's dresses. The challenge, however, lay not in the array of gowns but in the form of her eldest sister Alexis, whose overbearing opinions threatened to overshadow Amy's vision for her big day. As the entourage gathered in the bridal salon, Amy's dream of elegant peach-colored dresses clashed with Alexis's firm belief in short, sassy attire for the bridesmaids. The tension was palpable, and the sisters found themselves at an impasse. Enter the groom, a beacon of support and reason in the midst of the growing storm. Understanding the dynamic between Amy and Alexis, he stepped in to ensure that the bride's wishes took precedence. Aware of Alexis's assertiveness, he diplomatically reminded her that this was Amy's day, and the bridesmaids' dresses should reflect the bride's vision, not the opinion of the eldest sister. Who is my bride? Me over here. My Who's this handsome fellow? This is my wonderful man. My. <laughs> I'm doing that just to, just to get some good graces. These are my sisters on this side: Joni, Amber, Amelia. This is Alexis. She's the oldest. I what you're looking for today? Just a simple, elegant peach dress. My older sister, Alexis, is bossy. She was engaged. She wants to have control of the situation. <sighs> But today is about Amy. Lori always says, no roosters in the hen house. I think this rooster might actually be our saving grace today. Lori, the experienced shop owner and consultant, sensed the escalating tension and decided to intervene. With a keen eye for conflict resolution, she suggested a compromise that would give both Amy and Alexis a chance to express their preferences. Lori proposed trying on both short and long dresses to allow Alexis to see firsthand what Amy envisioned for her bridesmaids. As the dresses were paraded before the anxious group, Alexis couldn't resist the temptation to voice her opinions. Attempting to steer the decision-making process, she interjected with her thoughts on the short dresses. However, the consultants, along with the groom, formed a united front in support of Amy. They tactfully conveyed that Amy's desires were the focal point of the day, encouraging Alexis Alexis to respect her sister's wishes. Frustration and disappointment marked Alexis's face as she realized the unity against her well-intentioned interference. The groom, standing steadfast beside Amy, emphasized the importance of family support and understanding. Slowly but surely, Alexis began to see the bigger picture. In a moment of revelation, Amy's older sister conceded, recognizing that her role was to support and uplift the bride rather than impose her own preferences. With Lori's guidance, the bride and her sisters navigated towards a compromise that satisfied everyone. Amy ultimately chose a long, elegant beige dress that struck the perfect balance between her vision and the need for familial harmony. And so it begins. It really is just used to being, you know, the head honcho. She's used to being the big sister and making the decision. But maybe, I think so. I think she's I think just so. used to being a little boss. I like it. Amy has like a whole lot of swag like me, so <laughs> I really think that she'll like it. And then Alexis isn't your favorite from day one. I'm confused. I love both Alexis and I'm just not crazy about the peach dress. You are not going to get everybody to agree. Right. Which ones do you like? Pick. You need to pick. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Right. This is not her wedding. This is my wedding. I love the beige dress. Number 1. Bride Jessica The bridal salon was buzzing with anticipation as Jessica Knight, the bride-to-be, embarked on the quest for the perfect bridesmaid's dresses. With her vision set on a classy and sophisticated affair, Jessica sought black dresses to complement the elegant theme of her wedding. My name is Jessica Knight, I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. This is my fiancé, John Michael. Kind of got roped in to come in here with eight hours of trying on dresses is... All right, tell me what we're looking for today. A strapless or a one shoulder. Do you have your colors picked out already? Oh, it's a spring wedding. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I was just saying, thank you. I don't really care for black for bridesmaids dresses. <laughs> Her comments can 
sometimes be a little harsh. However, her mother, a staunch advocate of spring colors, made no effort to hide her dissenting opinions. As the bridesmaids began to try on dresses, Jessica's mother couldn't resist the urge to vocalize her disapproval. Snide remarks and snorts escaped her lips, creating an uncomfortable atmosphere in the salon. Her critical comments extended beyond the color preferences, targeting the body types of the bridesmaids. The atmosphere turned tense as her laughter echoed through the room, leaving the bridesmaids feeling self-conscious and uneasy. Amidst the chaos, Monty, the seasoned fashion designer, entered the scene to assist consultant Nikki in handling the delicate situation. Recognizing the need to address the mother's behavior, Monty approached the group with tact and authority. With a calm yet assertive tone, he reminded Jessica's mother that this was Jessica's special day, and the bridesmaids' dresses should be chosen based on their comfort and size, not on personal preferences. Monty's intervention had an immediate impact. The mother, caught off guard by the designer's stern yet empathetic words, paused for a moment of reflection. The focus shifted back to the bride's vision, and it became clear that the priority was making the bridesmaids feel beautiful and confident in their chosen attire. How am I gonna get these two together? Want something fitted? I want something more flowy. So chiffon would possibly Chiffon would be... probably work really good. <laughs> she likes she beer cans off the fence and... Jessica and I have a really unique relationship. <laughs> Her to be happy. What do you want? It's up to you. Yeah. And I'll... Yes, tomorrow's dress. Well, then get out! As the group recalibrated, Jessica decided to bridge the gap between her vision and her mother's preferences. She chose a stunning sweetheart neckline short dress that embodied both sophisticated touch of playfulness. The silhouette complemented the bride's diverse body types, ensuring they felt comfortable and radiant on the big day. Monty's guidance not only diffused the tension, but also empowered Jessica to make a decision that aligned with her vision while respecting the feelings of her bridesmaids. The salon transformed from a battlefield of conflicting opinions to a space where the bride's vision was upheld, and the bridesmaids felt valued and beautiful in their chosen dresses. In the end, Jessica emerged victorious in her quest for the perfect bridesmaids dresses, proving that love, understanding, and a touch of expert intervention could turn a challenging situation into a memorable and harmonious bridal salon experience. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.